Okay, so today we're going to talk about engine balancing and we're going to go through V6 engine balancing, in particular the Essex V6, which is an, uh, not a 90 degree V. It's actually a 60 degree V. So that makes it a little bit, little bit more complicated, but the mathematics is pretty much the same. First of all, let's go through the mathematics of what you need to do to make the things called bob weights. The bob weights are what you put on the crankshaft to simulate the, the mass of the piston and the rotating assembly sort of thing. Um, you need to put them on on a V engine before you, balance, before you balance the crank. You can't just shove it in and go for it. You can do that with straight sixes and inline fours, but not with V engines. So you've got to make bob weights. So, to make the bob weights, first of all, we're going to measure a whole load of things. The first thing we do is we'll measure all the reciprocating masses, all the up and down weights that are going on in the engine. So we've got the piston, yeah, gudgeon pin, rings, there's all the rings, uh, and the small end, the little end of the conrod, which we're going to do on this. And you have to also add in a couple of grams for oil as well. So, piston, so first of all, piston. Uh, what I use is a set of old set of paint scales because they're very very accurate and you can get them quite cheap. So, old set of paint scales, zero of them. Get get the piston on there, weigh that. Okay, it's 580.1 grams. Get all your pistons, weigh all them, do the same thing. And in a separate video, we'll go through the, uh, like balancing of components where you balance um, pistons to each other and rods to each other and lit lens and that sort of stuff. But assume that's done. You've got your piston weight, which was what we said. Then we've got gudgeon pin, which is 163.2. We've got rings, which is 47.2. And then for the little end, what I've got here is I've got a scribe that I've cut off on a stand that's welded to the bottom of the uh, scales. And on the other end, I've got an old socket on, an, on another DTI stand that I can adjust. So I can adjust to have, when I put the rod on, it's perfectly flat. And that little, little spike rests on the crack uh, where the two uh, halves of the uh, conrod bolt together. Now, I should be warned that this measurement, despite what anyone says, is like almost impossible to get accurate. There, there's just no good way of doing it. I've tried like bathroom chains and bearings without uh, the grease in them and I've tried all sorts of things and, and this, this is probably the best one but regardless what you have to do is you take that measurement so it's 190 for example take it off put it back on the same spot 192 off same spot 193 off same spot 192 so you, you take all those you do like say 10, 10 measurements for each rod and then you average it and use that uh, that is then your little end weight. Okay, and then to get your big end weight, you just weigh the whole rod and subtract that number from the whole weight, and that gives you your big end weight. Okay, so now, now we've got all of our weights here. We've got our reciprocating masses and our rotating masses because we've calculated uh, the, the big end weight, and, we can, and then we need to weigh the bearings as well, the... Uh, the big end bearings. So just put them on the scales and weigh them. And then again, add some, uh, some weight for oil. So next, balance factor. So this being a V6, which is a 60 degree angle on the V6, uh, it's 45%. But for a 90 degree, it's always 50%. It's really easy. It's only because it's, a, it's, a diff, it's different from 90 that you have to use a different balance factor. Right, now you've got your balance factor, bob weight. So the bob weight is the reciprocating masses, this right here, times uh, 45 divided by 100. So basically you're getting a percentage of the reciprocating masses. You're getting 45% of the reciprocating masses plus the rotating mass. That lot added together. Now, because this is a... Yeah, you know, the reason I chose this V this V six is because it's a bit of a weird one. Um, you don't have you, the, the mains 
don't share the same journal, like on a lot of the engines. They've got separate journals. So you have to divide this bob weight by two and you have to make, instead of just having, uh, say, three bob weights, you've got to actually have six. So I'll go into the balancing room now and I'll show you how you do that. Okay, so now we've finished our calculations. These are our bob weights. We made these ourselves in-house, so they're very accurate. I spent a very long time measuring every single component on this, and making sure they're all exactly accurate, the exact same weight as each other, so everything's interchangeable. Because of this being a, uh, not a 90 degree crank, we've got to have um, six uh, bob weights for it, because it doesn't share the same uh, main uh, big end journals. So what I'm going to do next is carefully put all of these onto the crankshaft and they've got to be completely flat and in line and perpendicular to the uh, position of the journal. You'll see that better when we get on with it and, and you see them being installed there. Okay, so uh, start putting them on. Okay, so I've got all the bob weights on now. Uh, and if you look, that thing I was talking about earlier, if you look from the center of the main bearing and go up to the center of the big end bearing, the bob weight wants to be, like the, the side face of it wants to be perpendicular to that, so it's flat. That's, that's just so that you align them all exactly the same way. It doesn't really matter how you orientate them as long as they've all, they're all orientated in the same manner. Now, the other thing you'll notice that if you've got that right, big ends that oppose each other, like these two here, they'll be exactly the same angle. So those two the same angle, those two the same angle, and those two the same angle. So the thing set up on the, on the balancing machine now, we've got the flywheel on there, we've got the uh, front pulley on and the timing gear and the keyways and all the bolts and all that stuff's in. I'm not bothering to put the clutch on yet, because I'll, I'll balance that after. Because of course, you know, if once you wear the clutch out, you want to make sure that the next time the next clutch you put on, you know, you're not balancing the clutch, you're balancing the disassembly. So that you can change clutches without an issue. And, th and they, they can balance from the factory anyway. So yeah, that's about it. So I think we're ready to start it up. Okay, so just before I start this up, I'll just go through a couple of things. This is, um, this V6 engine is what they call externally balanced. So the flywheel and this front pulley here have got extra weight in them at specific places to help counteract the balance, the in imbalance in, in the crank here. So there's a, there's a weight there and there's a big weight here on this. If this was an inline four typically or a straight six, I might put the crank in without the flywheel and the pulley and the, even the timing gear on and balance that first. So it's a nice thorough way of doing it. You'd, you'd balance that first. Of course, you don't need bob weights with an, with an inline engine like that. So you'd put that on, I'd balance the crank, and I'd say, right, that's perfect. Now I'll put my timing gear and my pulley on, say, and I'd balance that as a separate thing as well. Then I'd put the flywheel on and balance that. Then I'd put the clutch on and balance that. And that, it's good practice to do that because then if any particular component uh, needs replacing in the future, you don't have to go, oh gosh, like, I went and balanced it using the flywheel, which means I've got to take the whole crank and everything out to sort that out now, I can just take that flywheel off knowing that the rest of this is perfect. You know, say I wanna, I wanna lighten it a bit more or something, I can do that, lighten the flywheel for a race engine and then put it back on, balance, it, uh, balance this out of the engine on this machine independently and put it back on there and everything's balanced still, no problem. But this being a V6 like this with the external balancing, it means we can't do that. We've got to balance it as a complete assembly and that's why it's all here, ready to go. So now we'll fire the machine up and we'll see where we're at initially, see, see how imbalanced it is. Okay. So this machine, ha this machine actually has three pillars for balancing. We're using two of them at the moment. One at the flywheel end, one at the pulley end. To set it up for this, this end, we, put, we select this switch, which we're on now. And then for switching between the pillars, we use this switch. This switch is for sensitivity. And this switch dictates as to whether I drill the crank to balance it or whether I 
add material, like put some heavy metal in there. So we're going to have it on drill, so that I have to remove material from the crank when the machine tells me to do so. And we're going to have it on lower sensitivity, because at the moment I can physically see that this end is quite unbalanced. And it's probably going to max the machine out. So, okay, so we'll start off on the, the, um, this end here. But I think it'll be so violent, it's such a, so out of balance it'll max the machine. So, what you do is you, you rotate this handle here, and you watch the needle, and you let it go to maximum, and then you bring it back down just to minimum, when it just hits minimum. So, just there. So that, that is the point at which I need to remove material from this crank. So if I stop the machine now, and I align these two gauges here, these two verniers, that'll tell me to remove material from the top. I'll show you what on the other end though. So if we do the same thing for the other end now. So if I, if I switch this to the flywheel end, and I slowly rotate this. Now if this isn't, this isn't maxing out, this isn't pinning actually, so I can show you a bit better on this one. I just bring it down until it just reaches the end. That's that. Now if I select this switch here, that'll tell me how out of balance it is. Again, this number doesn't actually mean anything per se, other than the fact that if I remove material, I'm doing a better job of it or I'm making it worse. Because the objective is to get that needle into the green band. And at the moment, we're nearly at the end of the scale. And this is on the core setting, of course. If I put it on fine, it'll pin. Right, so, now we'll turn the machine off. And on this vernier here, it's saying six. I've got to align the other, this wheel that's spinning that's connected to this crankshaft with six. Okay. So, uh, there we go. You can lock that off. So that's saying that I need to take weight off of this end so what you basically do is, you, you, I, you know, I, could, I, I can either drill, drill the flywheel, which is probably quite an easy option, just take a drill and do a couple of hot test holes and see how much that affects the reading I was having. And then you basically just keep going back and forth, spinning up, back and forth, back and forth, until um, you've got it in that green band. Well, that's what I aim for, but a lot of the times, other crankshafts I've put on this that have been seemingly balanced are still running on this machine at sort of like sort of 40 or 50 but I like to try and get it as absolutely near as damn it to zero as possible. So I do a bit on this end, then I, you know, I spin it back up again, I do a bit on this end and I just work my way between the two until I've ended up with zero or near as I can to it. And that's it really. Okay, hopefully that video has been pretty useful for you there. Uh, if you've got a crankshaft you're trying to balance and you're having trouble with it, just send it to us, we can sort it out for you. Uh, straight sixes, V8s, V12s, whatever, we can do it, no problem.